This is what I'm talking about. You don't need a cabin. Get yourself a wall tent, light a fire, enjoy life. So you wanna build a cabin in the wilderness. You want that off-grid lifestyle. But maybe you don't have the time or the money or you're just not quite ready to make that full leap yet. Instead of starting with a cabin, start with a wall tent. By first putting up a wall tent or maybe permanently putting up a wall tent, you are on your way instantly to having all those things you need Plus, now you've got a place to live while you build your cabin. In this video, I wanna share everything I know about wall tents over our two decades of using them, living in them, and enjoying them. I wanna help you achieve your cabin dreams in the wilderness, and it might just start with a wall tent. Let me give you a quick tour of mine, and then I'm gonna talk about all the things you should look for when you buy a wall tent. This is Edna. She apparently thinks the fire pit is a good spot to lounge. So do you like that spot, girl? Let's go take a look at the wall tent. Now this tent is a 12 by 14. It's got a structure of steel tubing. Now this is just electrical tubing you can buy out of Menards. So if you buy a wall tent like this, you're either going to choose whether to purchase an angle iron kit, which are these pieces right here. You purchase those from the wall tent supplier and then what you do is cut your own pipe to fit the angle iron. I'm just gonna give you a quick roundabout here. This wall tent is supported by four series of pipes in the ceiling and you can kind of choose on some of the models uh, how many pipes you want to support it. Also something very important is a stove jack. We never have a wall tent without a wood stove and so most good wall tent companies are going to provide you with a stove jack. Now there's a flap on the other side of this that's covering it right now. It's summer. It's really quite warm. Now we don't really need the wood stove so I've got the flap covering the opening. Um, as far as amenities you choose when you get a wall tent, um, you can choose to have windows you can choose to have screens, doors, wherever you want to put it. It's going to cost you more money than the base price of a tent. Now I like to have screened windows on each side for ventilation. And it also doesn't make you feel so closed in. You can open it up and you can have instant access to fresh air and daylight, which I really, really love. The other thing to point out is the color. You've probably seen lots of green army tents for sale on the internet that you can get really cheap. I would not recommend them. They are so dark. You want that natural light, which the white tent allows you to have. And so it's just so important to be able to just have natural light in here. There's tons of headspace in here. There's just so much room. It really does feel like an instant cabin when you've got it up. Let me show you what it looks like looking the other way. Looking out towards the front door, I've got two zips here. One for the screen, one for the main door, and it also has clips on the outside for the canvas. It's really important, I feel, to have a screened in front. You're gonna pay extra for all these things, but to keep the mosquitoes and everything down, you're gonna really appreciate having that screen door. Now, as far as the fabric weight, this is a 12 ounce treated duck canvas. It is fire, water, and mildew repellent treated. It's really important to get those things to help have a very long lasting tent. A lot of times you will find um, rendezvous tents, you know, uh, reenactment type tents, and they are usually made from a lighter material cotton canvas and they have not been treated at all. And also those type of tents tend to not have the reinforcements that you're really gonna need for long term wall tent use. And it's super important because this is an investment and you want to buy the best tent you can afford because it's gonna last you longer. Now, here are some things that you should look for in a tent when you go to purchase one. You want to see good reinforcements in all of the corners. This is where your tent is going to get the most uh, abrasive action. And so you, you want to see a tent that has reinforcements along the ridges and along the corners. Now, when you purchase an angle kit, a good tent company is going to provide you the exact dimensions of the tent you just purchased so that you can make accurate cuts. And usually I just use like a jigsaw with a metal cutting blade. It's not very fun. <laughs> takes a long time. You can do it with a hacksaw. Um, it's going to be pretty taxing and labor intensive, um, but it can be done. If you have a bandsaw, 
bam, you can get through the steel piping really quickly with that. If you're in the wilderness and you have access to poles, trees, that you can limb up, you want a ridge pole probably four to five inches in diameter and the other poles maybe three to four inches, you can totally rig up a wall tent with poles. So you don't necessarily need to have a steel frame. You can use poles that you get from the woods. And those poles are gonna go right through here. The ridge pole goes through the opening in the end and out the side. And then you crisscross poles on the outside to hold up the tent. As far as windows go, you wanna make sure that the screen is, is really heavy duty and secure to the fabric. This one has a zip and a Velcro on top. It's, it's um, very easy to just pull these up and close it up when you, when you want it closed up. We're back at the outside of the tent. You can see where that ridge pole would come out if you were using a wooden pole for a ridge. And then there would be another pole here and another pole here holding up the tent. As far as the screen goes, you just let it down and you can zip that up and as well, this clips back, everything zips together and then buckles the canvas as well. So if it's hot or cold, you can adjust what you need depending on the conditions. You're going to want to see that there is lots of adequate loops for tent stakes if you're going to have this on the ground. And the other thing you want is a storm cloth. You can see that this storm cloth we've got sitting outside of our platform. If you had snow, you could put snow on this and uh, keep, keep all the moisture out in the winter time. Um, otherwise, you want it to drain away from the tent. This tent has been reinforced on all the corners and the edging. It's got heavy D-rings and this is underneath the uh, rain fly. I highly recommend investing in a rain fly for your tent. It's going to help protect your tent and in the winter time, it's going to help that snow slide off and stay off your canvas. Although cotton canvas all by itself is waterproof, once it absorbs water, the fibers expand and it literally becomes waterproof. But there's always, there can be variations in stitching and other things that could allow just simple pinpricks of water to develop and come down into your tent. So adding a rain fly is going to prevent that for sure, but it's also going to just help protect your your tent from UV rays. It's going to give it a longer life. It would be much easier to replace the, the rain fly than the entire tent. So you want to protect that tent. And also you can see it sheds water. I need to tighten up these guy lines. It keeps the water away from your tent when it rains. Let's see what that fly looks like. It extends over the edge. So right here in the rain fly is the opening for the stove to come through. You would roll that back and roll back the opening on the tent itself and your stove pipe would stick out right there. Here again, you can see that storm cloth. And in the winter, I, I screw it down to the base of this platform. Now, even though you're not building a cabin, I do recommend building a platform for your tent to keep it up off the ground. Although we've had luck putting it right on the ground just as well. So it's really up to you. If you can't afford to build a platform, put it right on the ground. What I do is uh, these tents come without a floor. You can order a floor, but I've never wanted one. But when we put it right on the ground, we clear the area of all sticks and roots and everything. I lay down a tarp and then I buy this indoor outdoor carpet. I got this at Menards and I put that in there and it just kind of gives you a nice, you know, homey feel. I use just a broom to keep it clean. And at the front of the tent is just a rug that kind of collects all of the debris so we're not tracking everything in. But if you do build a platform, you want to build it the exact size of your tent, not bigger. If you want all that rain to come off your platform and not drain underneath the boards right back into your tent. Wait to build your platform until you know exactly what size of a tent you're going to get. And be aware that some tent companies um, we'll say it's a 12 by 14, but actually that's the cut size. And when they're sewed together, they end up being smaller. So you really want to check into the company to see what exact size you're going to get for a finished size, not a cut size. Let me show you some of the accessories I put in here. And it's really easy to make a wall tent feel amazingly homey and cozy. There's Daisy. Daisy. 
like I said, I use this for a catch-all. And then this is just indoor-outdoor carpeting. And you can see this is just an untreated deck. This is just an old, old boards we had around the homestead. So they have not been treated, but most of the year this wall tent sits here on this platform covering it. So it's going to last a long time. If you don't use treated wood, I would recommend um, giving this a coating of, of stain and helping to preserve the wood. One thing to keep in mind in wall tents is you're going to have issues with rodents and mice constantly. So when we're not here, I keep all of our bedding and everything that can be chewed on right in here in the cedar chest, which Edna's not going to let me show you. Same for any kind of food items I keep in this closed little cabinet, even at nighttime, because at nighttime the mice will come out and start getting into your food and whatnot. So I really like to have everything buttoned up against <laughs> the rodents. Look at you. Hi. Highly recommend some kind of a mouse trap, and this is the best one I've come to find for catching multiple mice while you're away. So let me show you that. So this is a pretty unique mouse trap in that you can catch more than one. You just uh, turn this, and it just cranks it up. And each time a mouse steps in there, it sets off a spring, kind of boots them into the box. Clean it out. You open it now. They could stay alive in there. I choose to use a bait in there that will kill them after they eat it. So I just don't want a bunch of live mice in there suffering. But you can let them go if you want. Of course, I'm not going to let them go. This is an amazing uh, mouse trap that it's going to catch more than one. You just leave it in the wall tent. So check that out. As far as the bed and the table and all all this stuff got it second hand I've painted it I fixed it up a lot of this stuff comes apart and folds flat for a bed you could just build a simple 2 by 4 frame this one is put together with just a couple sheets of plywood and some dowels and I've got an old feather bed mattress and a couple pieces of foam but you could just as easily just use a, a blow-up mattress or whatever I mean the beautiful thing is you can make your wall tent look any way you'd like. Wood stove is a necessity, and I would definitely encourage you to get some kind of a spark arrestor within the, the pipe here or on the outside at the top of your pipe. One thing you're gonna wanna make sure is that your stove pipe extends high enough past your tent roof. So wherever the peak is, you want the stove pipe to be at least as high as the peak. There's absolutely no reason why you can't be just as comfortable in a wall tent as you can be in a cabin. And the thing is, it's just so much easier to deal with. So where do you get a wall tent? You can keep an eye out on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or the local classifieds if they still exist where you're at. I have gotten some pretty good deals that way. We have had tents from Alaska Tent and Tarp Company, the Davis Tent Company, and most recently, walltentshop.com. And that's who we're buying tents from currently. We feel like they have the best price for the quality. And also it's a veteran owned company and highly personable service. And we really just love the company. That's walltentshop.com. They're not sponsoring this video. I just want to give them a shout out. Um, if you do go there and look at their tents, tell them I sent you. If you're curious, what I have invested here in this 12 by 14 tent with the rainfly, with the extra screens and windows, with the indoor outdoor carpet and all of my accessories, I probably have a little under $2,000 invested. Now I got almost everything, in, I got everything inside secondhand. So you can do what you want on the inside, but as far as the total tent package, uh, you're looking around $1,600, $1,700 for what you see right here, not including the wood stove which I also got secondhand. Now they do make wood stoves specific to wall tents and they're smaller, they're lighter, they're portable. And um, there's a lot of those to choose from. Most wall tent companies will offer their own line of stoves or recommend some stoves that you can buy from them too. You would be amazed how warm these wall tents can be and you can be extremely cozy even when it's super cold out. I can't recommend a wall tent enough. We've spent months at a time living in wall tents from the Yukon River in Alaska to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. So you may be wondering how a wall tent would stand up in the winter time. 
Well, you can use them in the wintertime, but big caveat, you have to be present with your wall tent every day. If you're in an area that gets any amount of snow, and especially heavy wet snow, you have to be really, really careful with how you get the snow off that tent every day. They will definitely collapse under a big load of snow, and you've got to stay on top of taking the snow off every day. And there again is where a rain fly really helps. You push it from the inside out and it slides right off. It's wonderful. When it comes to the portability of a wall tent, you really can't beat it. I have put up this tent by myself. Uh, it takes a bit of effort, but it can be done. But I would highly recommend at least two people to put up a wall tent. The advantage of putting up a, something that you can be in instantly pretty much, as opposed to a cabin build, which is going to take you months probably to pull off, you know, it's a great trade-off. If you're worried about the investment, you shouldn't be. Wall tents have a great resale value, especially around hunting season. A lot of hunting outfitters and hunters like to use wall tents. So the investment up front is totally worth it. It really beats putting months of, of your time and your energy into a cabin build when you could start enjoying your piece of land, your off-grid lifestyle right now. Makes it a lot easier to start your off-grid homestead, having a place to lay your head and be comfortable and stand up and get out of the rain and the weather. I mean, it's just wonderful, right? It's just wonderful. For portability, for doability, and for the sense that you can get what you want almost instantly and be completely comfortable and set up in a wall tent, well, you just can't beat them. Not only is a wall tent just downright cozy, I mean, it, they're magical. You put some candles in this thing, light it up, and it's just like, you're your own Airbnb. <laughs> it's so cool. And there's just this visually appealing, romantic thing for me personally, about a wall tent. They're just, they're dreamy. <laughs> they're dreamy. Well guys, hope you liked this video. If you liked it, I've got another one for you to watch right here. Click that video, day in a life at an off-grid wall tent. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you in the next one. This girl in the woods, she gone. Oh, don't forget to get outside and get happy. Mmm, it's gonna be good.